All right, so we are here. Um, just as a note, originally we weren't gonna have like quite uh, this agenda for today. We were expecting more customers attending that had uh, Viva Engage and or Yammer already in use. And so what we heard from you uh, via the polls um, for both options one and option two last week is that we're anywhere from half to two thirds of you are new completely. So you weren't previously Yammer users. We all know Yammer has now evolved to be called Viva Engage. It will all be called Viva Engage, all the different uh, app experiences, whether it's mobile, desktop, web, et cetera. That's taking a little time over the next few months. Um, you're starting to see that if you're using it. So we're going to do some deeper dives into each of the key uh, functional areas. So this week, we're going to focus on communities and self-expression. Next week, we'll focus on leadership. And then week four, we'll focus on knowledge. So we just want to make sure you understand like the core capabilities, the core business value scenarios. Um, we have tremendous opportunities and ways we can help you um, with technical questions and configuration and adoption. So we we want to make sure that we get out of this is that you walk away with an understanding of what we engage is and how it can help your organization. And thank you uh, for posting a link to the community in the chat. So I mentioned we have help, uh, so we're not going to just run this four week session and say good luck with that. Uh, that's not it's not how we operate. You don't need to memorize the slide. Number one, it'll be in the slide deck that's published, but additionally, like your customer success manager uh, can help you get access to any of these uh, options. But it's really meant to share that you're not alone on the journey and we have lots of different ways depending upon what you need. So you can see there is if you need help with deployment or driving adoption, or maybe you have a technical blocker, maybe there's a feature or configuration that we don't support at the moment. We also, you know, we want your feedback there as well. Anyway, so this is, you're not alone. I should probably just put that uh, as a title to the slide. All right, so this, as I mentioned, this week we're gonna focus on communities and self-expression. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper, take it a little bit more slower, a little bit more focus time. So a little bit of review of the capabilities with slides and video, and then I'm also gonna do a demo as well. Um, so to start us, so we shared some of these slides last week, so I won't spend uh, too much time on them, but just wanted to kind of review um, from a community's perspective, some of the core um, scenarios that you would use it. So obviously our communities, they're this virtual place where we can go to connect with our colleagues. So I work on a global team, we're located around the world. Um, many of you are working in organizations that may have a hybrid or a remote working model. So it's really a way to connect with people that maybe you would have otherwise met in the break room or the cafeteria, you know, seen a, you know, an internal conference or something. So this is one of those ways um, to connect with those people and also just, there's always people in your organization that have similar interests and you just may not know who they are. They may just work on another team and you may not have that opportunity. So um, it has much more value, but in the past we've referred to it as the virtual water cooler. It's also a way to give leaders a place to share mission, align people and scare culture. Um, oftentimes we know that in the modern work environment, there's a lot of challenges around productivity uh, perspective from leadership being different than those of us that are just kind of the, the uh, core workers, you know, that are not in leadership roles. And so like, we feel we're working hard, maybe leadership doesn't view it that way. And so there's just always these disconnects. And so it's a way to make sure that we know what's expected, they see what we're doing, and that we're all aligned and really practicing um, the culture that we have for our organization. Plus, it's a place to have uh, sharing and contribution of knowledge, answers, and ideas. So kind of the core thing there is like you have a lot of knowledge in your organization. A lot of it's in your employee's head. So like we like to think that it's all documented and captured somewhere, but a lot of times it's in somebody's head. So having this place where people can not only find documents and access, you know, applications that have, you know, Q&A and forums, but like you can actually engage the right people, you can tag people and actually have that holistic um, set of knowledge from the company. And like, obviously, as things get posted, you're building that repository of information over time. Um, so won't read you uh, the slides. And I violated my presentation rule of not turning my phone off. So have it solved. Sorry about that. Um, 
So I'll read you the slide, but these are just some example scenarios that you can view from different departments, um, you know, marketing, IT, sales, um, having communities, your diversity, shared interests and in business initiatives. Um, one of the nice things about Viva Engage is that everybody has the ability to share. So people that are maybe less confident speaking in a meeting or presenting, you know, internally, like they can actually share in a virtual way that's maybe a little bit less um, challenging to them. You know, we have introverts and extroverts and all things in the middle. Um, so it's it's a great way to get, kind of balance out uh, the voice with maybe people that aren't as comfortable in the live aspect of sharing thoughts. Um, and then last, updates, experiences, and perspectives. It's a great way to see what's going on across your organization. And, you know, sometimes on Fridays, I will just kind of like scroll through different uh, communities to see what's going on. Hey, wait one second. I, I need water, and this is—it's colored water. It's not—it's not beer. It's not wine. <laughs> but I like flavored water. All right, moving on. Um, so once again, these are just some example scenarios. I always feel like I have to explain that, or somebody's going to think something. Uh, so these are some example scenarios uh, for being engaged. Um, so keeping people up to date with news, policies, organizational changes. Those seem to be going on um, constantly sometimes. Uh, Having employee resource groups and community audiences, specific communications, events that are going on. Um, one, of, one of the biggest things to highlight is that Viva Engage spans Teams, Outlook, um, Web, um, Yammer, Viva Connection. So, like as I mentioned, Yammer was the predecessor. Um, the, te the technology is all the same. Um, Viva Engage started out as just the app and Teams, but now all of the experiences are there. So like whether you're talking web, desktop app, mobile experience, Microsoft Outlook, like it's everywhere. So you really have um, your choice of where you experience your communities. You can even embed it in the SharePoint page. So like it's, it's really um, kind of across Microsoft 365. Um, you have leadership and executive communications abilities, uh, which we'll focus on next week. Uh, that allow you to have delegate posting. That's a premium feature we mentioned. Um, basically, being able to have somebody else posting your behalf, um, hosting your virtual company-wide meetings, and ask me anything or AMAs, and then you know having social campaigns. Um, so connecting with your communities. Um, so you can see some you know basic practices here, um, creating and joining communities. So like. Every once in a while, I'll have a community recommended to me that I didn't know existed that is very helpful. So like just being able to see what's out there, maybe searching for something, not just places where you can get value, but also places where you can give back and contribute. Um, asking questions and marking the best answers. So when we talk about knowledge management, which will be like our week four focus, you know, communities are a great place to ask questions because when you ask your colleague, maybe over the phone or in chat, like that's a two people conversation. When you ask the community and Viva Engage, then not only are you having your question answered, but that best answer is being marked. And then any, anybody who comes down the road later and asks that same question will see your answer, will see the best answer, and then they're immediately able to go on their way. They don't have to wait for somebody to respond. So over time, it's a really great way to build up that knowledge. Um, sharing files, photos, and videos to the community. We all know that um, while text is good, documents good, pictures and videos better. Um, and sometimes it's just because we have people that like to read versus others that like um, audio and video. And then we also just, it's more visually interesting than having like a page of text. Um, you know, thinking about when I started in this business in the 90s, uh, web pages were a lot of text and, you know, we started having dancing hamsters and all sorts of crazy audio and video. And now like we have this rich professional uh, platform like Viva Engage to like communicate things in a business way. And it, it's really been great to watch the evolution. Anyway, sorry, side note. Um, I get a little nostalgic. I'm celebrating 30 years in uh, the technology industry this month. So uh, super exciting. Uh, using your community as a front door to field questions, best practices, and represent your interests. Um, so it's basically that becomes the official place. You have official communities so that somebody knows that that's the right place to go, whether it's for an employee resource group or for HR or IT or a specific application. And now Office is telling me it's updating in 30 minutes. So I'm thinking my presentation should be done in case I have to switch to my phone. Awesome. All right, technology. 
it's it's awesome. Um, asking for feedback and crowdsourcing solutions. So sometimes you'll see in our internal Microsoft communities, maybe we have a customer challenge that we don't really quite know how to address. So you can ask your immediate team, of course, but like we also have the power of brilliant people across this organization. So asking in the community, will not just get ideas from people that are in your job role and think like you, but actually all across the organization. And then you get really innovative ideas that maybe you wouldn't um, get if you asked it just like on your local team of 10 or 15 people. And then like other um, consumer social media, the ability to at mention people, then you can, if you know that somebody is a subject matter expert in a particular topic, then you can pull them into the conversation. They get a notification, they answer it. And it's a very, it's a very quick process. And then, you know, those people are getting rewarded for sharing their knowledge. People are getting their questions answered and it creates a really nice um, environment. Um, so just some more examples. Um, announcements are one of the easiest ways to uh, le leverage Viva Engage and like have people go there. So if you decide to make that the place to go for organizational announcements, it's really easy because then people know that this is where I go, this is where I can find what's been going on. Maybe I was on holiday for two weeks. It's really easy to go back and find those announcements. Um, use cover photos to make your communities more interesting. You can pin things. We do this all the time at Microsoft to make sure that anything that's important. Uh, we had a Viva Summit last week, for example. So all of the content and information around that was pinned to the top of our employee experience or Viva community. Um, so those sorts of things, um, really help people get to what they need to know. Um, just like any other uh, media platform, the fact that you've got posts coming in from all of your different communities and maybe leaders that you're following, people that you're following, um, having pin posts, having feature posts, it really makes it easy to stay up to date with the things that are important and timely. Um, we mentioned before, you know, messages across all of the different app experiences. Um, as I mentioned, you can feature conversations. So if there's things that are important organization-wide, um, you can feature those conversations over the entire uh, Viva Engage network, and those can get up to 10 times the engagement of other posts. So if you have super important announcements, maybe organizational changes or things that are coming up, you can feature those conversations to make sure people are seeing those posts. And then last, um, it seems like we can't do anything without measuring it, um, which is good because we can't improve what we can't measure. Um, so there's a lot of analytics within Viva Engage that will help you understand what communications are being read, where employees are being engaged. And maybe, you know, you can also see that if your posts aren't engaging employees, like maybe try different ways um, to improve it, either with content or audio, video, but just kind of making those changes to see if you get improved engagement. And hopefully, uh, Margo, you can address some of the questions in the chat. Um, this is really just an example for you. So this will be in the deck, um, but this is really just some ideas for leveraging Viva Engage across different departments and industries. So I'm going to just pause here for a moment um, and let you review it. Um, it'll be in the deck to look at later. But you can see just lots of options. Um, a couple I would highlight would be under first line workers um, to basically keep them informed, included, and engaged. These are people that maybe are not sitting at a desktop all day. So, you know, they don't have a computer, maybe they're just on a tablet or a mobile phone. So this is a really nice way for them to stay up to date with what's going on while they're servicing your organization's customers. Um, going in the opposite direction of the slide, if we look under human resources, if you think about onboarding, training, all of those things, like it's a great way um, to have maybe you have a new employee uh, community so people are a member of this community for their first 60 or 90 days they have announcements and training and like all of that gets delivered um, through that experience so just a great way um, to leverage the technology so i think we covered those all right so that's kind of, that is the communities. Um, those are the scenarios. So those are all the different ways you would use communities. And so now we're going to kind of move into self-expression. And so for me to engage, that basically means storylines and stories. So up until last fall, I think it was, everything you posted in Viva Engage was within the boundaries of a community. So everything was tied to a community. It wasn't tied to you as a person, as an employee, as a professional. And so we introduced storylines and stories to let 
people have their own feed, right? So like you can go to Heather's page and you can see what I'm posting or Margo's page. And so this way people can build a personal brand, they can share their thoughts and perspectives and it doesn't have to be within the context of the community. And so we've got a short little video and I'll post the link to the video in the chat here as well. Okay, awesome. So I see I see the question in the chat about the what to use when, and we are adding that to to either session three or session four. Um, so one of my suggestions, like what we're doing inside Microsoft, is we're moving our communities from. Uh, we're trying to move our communities. You know, people people take various times to change in our modern work. Uh, customer success organization. Our communications leaders have done a great job of driving people to be engaged, and so we're moving away from using Teams for communities. And there's a few reasons for that, but it's like, if you're like me, you, like I counted them the other day, and I think I had, I think it was maybe 60 teams that I belong to, and like half of those were communities. And so by removing, by moving those communities over to Viva Engage, it means when I go to do my work in Teams, that's a smaller number of teams. So like it's reducing kind of that mental overload. Um, like we're only able to process so much. So it just, it's less overwhelming when I open teams as I start removing those communities. And so if I want my communities, I still have the Viva Engage app in teams, but like my list of, of teams is smaller because my communities are not there anymore. They have moved to Viva Engage. Um, from the SharePoint perspective, um, just to kind of finish up that comment, a uh, question from Insu um, was basically around like, to me, your SharePoint sites are like your virtual place to go, right? Like we have our human resources website, we have our tech web for like IT support. So there's all these places. So this is like your virtual storefront, if you will, of like places to go for, I wanna find policies and links to applications and all those things. So like, that's a physical place. Viva Engage is much more of kind of that feed, like it's a feed of content, right? So if you're trying to find your policy that was uh, shared six months ago, unless it's listed as like a resource in your community, you're not gonna wanna scroll back six months in that community to find the post. So like our SharePoint sites serve that function for like that official content um, and the rich media, obviously, a lot more complex page layout options than a Viva Engaged post. So like, um, I would just say that Viva Engage for communities, Teams for teamwork and collaboration, calls and meetings, and app integration if you're using that. Um, so that that's just that's Heather's view of the world. We also have a Microsoft Collaborate architecture that we're going to present, like I mentioned, either next week or the last week. But um, yes, it is it is challenging and it takes time. Like if you're starting, if you don't have communities in either, then it's probably a little bit easier. But if you have the habit of having your communities and teams, you'll have to make that decision to move them, you know, to be engaged so that you don't have them in two places. And it might take you a year or more to, to get all of those communities um, transition, but it, it definitely helps. It, it helps to not have so many teams because unless you're um, better at, managing uh, team creation in Microsoft Teams or community, communities for that matter. But like we, did, we don't have a lot of restrictions around um, team creation. You end up with a lot of communities. Some of them have overlap and it's just, it's overwhelming to a lot of employees to see that many uh, groups and teams and Microsoft Teams every day when they start up to do their work. Cause like, that's where I start. I start in Teams chat. I see who's messaged me overnight cause I'm on a global team. And so when I see 60 teams, it's just, it's a little bit much. All right, so we so we talked about storyline stories um, with the video. Um, I did share the link in the chat in case the audio wasn't working for anyone. Um, so as I mentioned before, it's your place um, to share your thoughts and perspectives. Um, you can follow people just like you would in any sort of consumer social media experience just for work. And so you can follow your colleagues, you can follow your leaders um, and build your network. Once again, it, it's a great way to just connect with people. You wouldn't have the opportunity to do that um otherwise um so from this is our home in viva engage so you can navigate to other experiences you can get to communities storylines leaders and answers on the right side you can see the quick navigation so you can actually see lydia's profile you can see all of the communities she's following so it's a great way um, to get to your most your most frequently used communities The quick navigation has 
shortcuts to everything um, that you're using. You can also see up here, you've got search. So this little search box in the upper right will let you search all of uh, Viva Engage or just the community that you're in. You can see your notifications as well. And so the things that were uh, previously on the left side of the web experience for Yammer or Viva Engage, they're now up here on the top right. So Viva Engage really lets you tap into the heartbeat of your organization. You get a home experience that's personalized by, by AI to surface relevant conversations and connections from across your organization. So the home feed is the first thing that you're going to see. It's a dynamic and personalized stream of information that keeps you informed and up to date from the communities you're a member of, people you follow, and more. It's meant to be engaging and easy to navigate, so you never miss anything important. So you can see here, we've got a mix of polls, you've got a question, you've got an announcement that's been pinned in all, all company. And so you can also see that there's campaigns going on, which we talked a little bit about last week. There's an Ask Me Anything event. So it's really meant to be like very quick to get you the most important things you need to see. Um, so here we have a poll. Polls are a great way to capture quick sentiment about a particular question or topic. Um, our questions are a great way uh, to share knowledge. And so not only asking questions when you need help, but also answering questions and helping other people as well. Um, I will say that while most of our communities uh, in Viva engage at Microsoft are business related, um, we also have some fun ones as well. We have uh, pets of Microsoft, uh, different groups. We have a nutrition geeks group. We have food foodie groups. And so um, it's, it's nice to lay around those fun elements um, to keep people engaged. And then, so if we go look at um, Lydia's storyline, uh, as we were watching the video a few minutes ago, this is Lydia's storyline. So you can actually see that she's posted um, a birthday shot of one of her colleagues, great group shot. Um, you can see praise being shared, thanking a colleague for their work on a campaign, um, posting about Mental Health Awareness Month. So really just you know, a way to share personal um, appreciation for people, photos, things that are going on with the team, but, but thoughts on things as well. Um, so this is so this is that, and you can also see the badges that Lydia has earned for asking and answering questions, um, the campaigns that she's following. So really great information. You can see the communities that Lydia has joined, and then you can also see, and this is Lydia's view um, logged in, and then you can also see like um, her personal analytics as far as people that are viewing her posts, engaging with the posts and the percentage of her followers that are engaged. And so that, that's our, our quick little tour, but really meant to just give more of a real world experience of what this looks like. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint if I can find my window. All right, moving forward. All right, so we are here at Training and Ad Adoption Guidance. Um, so I'm going to post a link in the chat. So uh, all of this information is available online. You do not have to do it all yourself. As I mentioned previously, we have quite a few programs where we can help you with that. But the adoption guide for Viva Engage is there in the chat. I just posted the link. So these are really just some highlights. Um, so these are really just some highlights for you. Um, we have more than this, um, but this is just kind of a good starting point to think about training and adoption guidance. Um, the things we know that makes adoption of Viva Engage successful is that our leaders use the technology. So um, they're able, if they lead by example, they share their posts on a regular basis, um, they use Viva Engage for announcements, then the employees generally, they're They'll be following them, they'll see those updates, they'll engage, they'll ask questions, they'll make comments. And so we know that leading by example is really important to the success of, you know, driving adoption of even Engage. Um, obviously, you want as many people in the organization using it as possible because being that it's the power of communities, the power of your collective knowledge, the more people you have participating, the more value you're going to get out of it. If you had 25% of the company there, then 
that's not great for having a diverse representation um, of thoughts, ideas, and knowledge. Um, having a Viva Engage launch event. So when you get ready to go live in full, like having a launch event, maybe you host a, a live meeting and kind of have an exciting kickoff, all sorts of um, possibilities there, but to actually like make it, make it an event um, so that people understand the value, what it's there to do and like where and how they should use it. So to just kind of have that starting point. Um, we also recommend using champions. So we'll mention our champions in a minute. We talked about them a little bit last week, um, but use your champions to identify wins, um, big and soft, small and sharing them over um, your networks. And those networks could be either engaged or elsewhere. Um, so really leveraging the people that are gonna be advocating um, for this capability within your organization. Um, so this is a sample communication plan that we have in the adoption kit, but obviously you'll cu customize for your own uh, task list, um, but you can kind of see, we suggest using the technology to manage the technology. So um, have a Viva Engage help community, have a Viva Engage ideas community. So like use the technology to have people for your champions, um, for you know support so that people have a place to go to say, hey, I'm trying to do this. And like that help community can then answer it as well. Um, so we mentioned the champions last week. And so those are people, your champions are generally not, I mean, it's not specific to be the engaged. They're generally people that are, um, advocates of technology in general, they may have supported you on other technology implementations. Um, so you might be able to leverage some of them that already exist today, maybe you enlist some new ones. Um, so you can see on the right some categories of people that would be good candidates for your champions. Um, we know that in it, I hate to stereotype by, by age, but generally millennials, um, they like the social capabilities of different um, technology platforms. And so they may be drawn to be the engaged because they like that experience. Um, anybody that's been in pilot programs in the past and has enjoyed it has, you know, contributed ideas and knowledge and then your influencer. So anybody that is, you know, their thoughts matter in the organization, they're paying attention to where they go, people follow. It's really leverage their influence to work for you. So have those people using Viva Engage, sharing their updates there, and then people will follow. Um, and we have a pro tip here to set up a specialist community that meets once a month to share insights, ideas, and best practices. So it really could just be your champions community, but that way it's not just like you turn it on and say, well, I'm sure it will all work out, but actually people coming back and saying, you know, we're having these problems, what kind of solutions do we have? Maybe you reach out to Microsoft, or it could just be, hey, we've had these great successes. How can we have other teams in our company use this model so they have the same successes? Um, so your champions are kind of your scale for support. You may have your internal help desk or service desk, but also your champions are going to be people local in your various work teams. And so um, if you give them the knowledge they need uh, to you to be power uh, Viva Engage users, then they're going to actually be able to share with others. And so instead of reaching out maybe to the help desk, maybe a champion, you know, in their team meeting, maybe there's 20 or 50 people there, they actually share their tips and tricks in like a 10, 15 minute session. They're going to have influence. They can share those um, presentations with others, other champions, and you can have like a really good impact without a lot of formal uh, effort. And there's some links here to our end user training guide as well as videos. Um, this is really just for you after this session. Um, it's all of the support and adoption resources. As I mentioned, and I apologize for the confusion, it was Yammer for many, many years. And then we renamed uh, the Teams app Viva Engage last year. And we're now in the process of renaming all of our application experiences for this technology Viva Engage. So hopefully by the time I give this presentation in like six months, it will just be Viva Engage and there will just be one link per section. Really apologize for the confusion, uh, but uh, process of change. And then um, last, we wanna cover uh, having a pilot group. So oftentimes we'll have customers that don't wanna turn this on for you know 50,000 people at once, which is reasonable. Um, so from last week, we this was the slide I shared last week and it's really just choosing your pilot group. 
Um, so making sure you have the right stakeholders, broad representation, um, people that are known to be open to trying new technology experiences, and then most importantly, people that have time to use it and provide feedback. Because if you're going to conduct a pilot or, or you know, limited rollout of the technology, you want to make sure people do have the time to do what you're asking. Um, as far as expectations management, um, let them know when that pilot's going to start and end. Um, let them know what kind of device types that your organization will support. So there's, um, you know, mobile devices, there's tab tablets and phones and desktops. So making sure that um, everybody knows what apps they should be using, um, the app experiences that your organization will support. So if you're going to have the Outlook add-in, if you'll have the Teams app, web, mobile, desktop. So like making sure everybody understands which ones um, are being used. Um, Here's the user guide. There's a link here. Um, you can customize it for your organization. So we're giving you a PowerPoint deck, but you can actually make it your own and add content, remove content so that it works for you. Um, as we mentioned before, use Viva Engage to have a community for employees to share feedback during the pilot. And then that would be, you know, hopefully a temporary community that goes away after two or three months. And then have that support community which would be a permanent community to have support for employees to request assistance. So if you actually um, let people help each other, then it should reduce on the um, adding a technology impact of like, you know, we often get questions, how many service desk people do I need to add? What does staffing look like for this? And so when you start to let people help each other, you change your IT personnel, you train your champions, then hopefully over time, like that community becomes self-sufficient and you see a reduce in the needs to have um, so many people, you should not have as many support tickets um, in your official systems. Um, for your support team, uh, obviously they're very important. Um, we add the team to that Viva Engage support community from what we talked about on the previous slide. Um, we recommend giving them early access. So in case they're not already using Viva Engage, that they have at least a couple of weeks to become familiar with it, become the experts so that, you know, when they start getting asking questions, they're very familiar with it. Um, I provided links to two sets of content, the getting started with Viva Engage from our Microsoft support. That's a very general set of content, very feature functionality based. And then introducing Microsoft Viva Engage, uh, Microsoft Learn, that's more of an IT admin whole set of content and that's on Microsoft Learn. Really good information and definitely will get you a long way in um, being able to support Viva Engage. And then last, work with your customer success manager, probably the person who invited you to this event to see what training and workshops are available. Um, we recently discontinued our Microsoft Stores training, but we have all of those training assets. Um, so your customer success manager, we can get you um, these uh, presentations, we can deliver these training presentations, and we can um, help you leverage them as well. And we also have workshops for talented people like Fargo and our other uh, cloud solution architects. And then uh, last, Ready Your Champions community. Um, so as I mentioned before, have a Viva Engage community for them. Um, this is a permanent one, so it doesn't have to be champions for Viva Engage, right? Like it could be champions for IT, it could be champions for Microsoft 365. It doesn't have to be specific to this one technology. Um, add the ones that are going to be in your pilot. And so this way they have a place to share feedback, recommendations, best practices. Um, ensure that they're familiar with the content from getting started with Viva Engage, so that user guide. And then also our public website has some really good content as well. So once again, just making sure that they understand um, the use case, the priorities for the business, how it works, features, capabilities, so they're able to really evaluate and assess it and you know make good recommendations to their colleagues. Um, I will say the third one is my own recommendation is assign a champion to each champion to a group of pilot participants. So say you had five champions and 50 pilot participants, give each champion 10 of them. And so that way that champion becomes kind of a point of contact for those 10 pilot participants if they have questions, if they have feedback, whatever. And so that way your champions are kind of doing that workload for you. Shouldn't take a huge amount of time, but that way they're actually interacting with the people that are in the pilot and they're going to have a better feel rather than just having everybody go to the IT service desk or rather than having them just fill out form surveys or going to a digital um, self-serve. 
he'll get some value out of the conversations and questions that occur. Um, plan surveys uh, to be launched before, during, and after, and we'll get more into the full pilot next week, but plan surveys for your champions um, to kind of make sure you understand what their level of knowledge is, um, what they're expecting you know, to do, where they see the value, and then as you go through the pilot, you can see whether their opinions change, what they see as gaps, what they see as really good and, you know, patterns that should be used. Um, but always ask the people <laughs> is a great way to know um, how to move forward. And then another pro tip, just give them early access ahead of all of the pilot users so that they at least have a week um, to collaborate there as well. All right. So I think I have one minute before my computer is going to do bad things and I may be switching to my phone. Um, so next week, we're going to cover leadership. So we're going to do our deeper dive on leadership to make sure that everybody has a full and deeper understanding of those capabilities like we did today for communities and self-expression. And then we're going to get more. So the implementation deployment side or planning and project management, we're going to focus on conducting a pilot. So like start to finish, if you wanted to roll this out to a set of people in your organization, what are those tasks? What does it look like? What do I need to do? So we want to answer all of those questions. So that's next week. All right.